Okay, what's going on everybody? My name is Mang, welcome back to Hanging with Mang. And uh, we're playing some Shadowverse today because it's a very good game. Uh, we're going to be doing, uh, playing my Runecraft deck going up against all the, uh, the classes on Elite, the hardest AI difficulty uh, where they kind of cheat maybe. Hard to say. It's it's not easy. Um, I actually, I almost forgot about hanging with Mang today. I was just laying around. And I was like, oh, I forgot to do something. That's right. It's Sunday. My days kind of blend together right now. Um, and I was playing WoW uh, for a number of hours, and then afterwards I was like, oh, I gotta, I want to play some Shadowverse, and I was like, oh, right. Um, <clears throat> so, let's see here. Uh, the Exploring Series, Monday we had the tour in video, which is, uh, which is doing alright. Can't complain too much about its performance. Um, not entirely bad. Uh, and then, um, throughout the week, this was the, this was, um, the first time that I actually spread out the creation of a video, uh, throughout the entire week starting on Monday. Normally I hold off a little bit, but uh, yeah, we uh, I spread it out and it uh, I think it turned out pretty well. I think it turned out pretty well and I think it'll be a pretty big hit, the Feanor and the Silmarils. Because um, I think Plenty of people have heard of like the Silmarillion uh, and heard of maybe the Silmarils uh, and they're like, oh, what's up with that? You know, what's going on with that? And so I think by combining it both and putting it all into the title as Feanor and the Silmarils, I think it'll be pretty good. <laughs> Shit, that sucks. All right. Um... So yeah, that will go live tomorrow. Check it out. Uh, it is the longest... Oh, he's got freaking resistance. Holy shit. I'm talking. I'm messing things up already. Um, yeah, longest in this whole series. I'm pretty sure. I don't think anything will top it. Um, and I made it shorter than it would have been because I talked pretty quickly throughout the whole thing. Um... Yeah, I'm absolutely going to lose this. No doubt in my mind. I'm doing things in the wrong order. I'm just messing things up all over the place. It's not good. Um, so I'm thinking, I don't know, maybe four or five more videos. Because um, the Baron and Luthien video is probably going to be next week. Uh, and then the... Um, the Tom Bombadil one is the last one. Uh, I'm thinking of doing, like, an Artifacts of Middle-Earth, so I'll talk about all, like, the named weapons and where, like, Gandalf's sword really came from. I think that'll interest people. Uh, as well as, um... doesn't really do anything for me if I do that. Yeah, I'm pretty screwed. Alright. Okay. This is not the end. Uh, okay. Um, and then, I, I don't know, some people wanted, like, a timeline video where I talk about the entire history of Arda and Middle-Earth in one thing and discuss the major events, uh, and when exactly they happened. So, what exactly 
happens in the first age, what exactly happens in the second age, and what exactly happens in the third age. The problem is, it's highly redundant. It's basically a recap of everything that I've talked about. If you watch all the videos that I've made, especially in order, you should have a decent idea of the sequence of events. Um, I guess, I suppose maybe it's a bit unclear. Um, and really, like I, I could sum up the timeline video very quickly by just saying, um, you know, in, in, in the first age, Morgoth ran shit, you know, pretty much, and it ended with him basically being banished. The second age was Sauron kind of running shit and making the rings. Uh, and it ended with him, you know, the, the, the beginning of the Lord of the Rings movies, beginning of Fellowship of the Ring, the movie, is like the end of the second age. And then the third age is basically the War of the Ring that you're most familiar with. That's pretty much it. Um, so I don't, I don't know about that. And then I was thinking of maybe doing a video on uh, Elrond and Gladriel because they have some interesting tidbits in their backstories that aren't represented fully in like the films and stuff. Um, I don't know, there's just some kind of odds and ends that I guess some people would probably be interested in, like Glorfindel, which is completely absent from the films, uh, and he's a pretty badass guy, because, you know, he killed a Balrog by himself, and, uh, he died, but he actually comes back to life, which is a bit of a kind of, um, a retcon, um, <laughs> from, from Tolkien, I guess, so... Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm really not sure. I mean, obviously, it's not going to go much on beyond that. Uh, and we're going to do the Tom Bombadil video, and then we're going to do a live Q&A with, uh, with Ziggy and I. And then... Um... And then that's kind of it. Then we'll move on to Star Wars. Um... Huh. Um, and I know I'm gonna get plenty of plenty of plenty. So many, co so many comments that are like, "No, you can't be done. You can't be done with war. There's so much more to talk about. Uh, you know, there's so many more things to say. You can't be done. You got to keep going. Make more videos." And throughout the whole Star Wars thing, and probably the next, two, like, when are you gonna go back to Lord of the Rings? There's so much more you didn't talk about. Blah blah blah. Um, because you know I still get comments about. When are you going back to Cthulhu Mythos? You haven't talked about blah blah blah, and it's just like, I'm I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm probably gonna lose. Um. Wow. Okay, that's great. Well, now I definitely lose. Oh, I can kaleidoscope two of them. Okay, hold on. I mean, I'm still gonna lose, but... Maybe not next turn. Um... Yeah, it just is what it is, and so Lord of the Rings is going to come to a close, which is, it's fine with me. Um, you know, pretty much no matter what I do right now, uh, I'm very certain that I'm going to get views. You know, when I was, when I moved from Cthulhu Mythos to Lord of the Rings, I was like, I was a little concerned, because I was like, well... You know, how much of these Cthulhu Mythos fans are going to carry over to Lord of the Rings? And, you know, there's got to be... I didn't even look, but I was like, there's got to be plenty of Lord of the Rings lore videos. 
And there are a good number of channels that are just Lord of the Rings lore. Um, and... I mean, I very quickly surpassed most of them. Except for, like, one or maybe two. Um, but I was, yeah, I was a little concerned at the time. Because if you don't bring in new blood, and your old blood doesn't like your new stuff, it can be problematic. But uh, it turned out fine. Um, nothing in the Middle Earth stuff has surpassed Cthulhu yet. But overall, I think it's been a more successful series, I think. Um, so I'm not worried anymore about moving on to Star Wars, which I think currently, and with the YouTube, average YouTube demographic, I think has a higher popularity than, Lord of the Rings. Um... Does seem awfully wasteful. Um, so yeah, I think I think Star Wars will be a big hit, right, right, especially right now with all the movies coming out. Um, it's very popular, and um, the only thing, the only concern, I guess, with Star Wars. is the whole canon issue. Uh, because, if you don't know, if you don't know, um, I guess maybe some people don't. It was a big deal in Star Wars fandom at the time, I think. But... It's still not worth it if I'm going to destroy it. Um... I guess conjure destroy um, you know originally they came out with uh, you know Star Wars and then they came out with two four more films and there were uh, there were comic books and there were um, like the Christmas special, you know, there were these certain things that that went along with Star Wars, but most notably within the uh, within the Star Wars universe is there were novels. There were a lot of novels. What in the yeah, eat that shit. Um, okay. <laughs> um, and this formed what we call the extended universe of Star Wars. Um, these went into, you know, um, like Luke Skywalker's children and grandchildren and Han Solo's children and grandchildren and things like that and um, all sorts of ancillary char ancillary characters and different planets and different factions you know there's so many novels and just built this entire unique uh, interesting universe to Star Wars and there were of course the video games and there's like you know Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic that goes into the extended universe and uh, the MMO the Old Republic things like that these all went into the extended universe and Lucas Lucas films or whatever uh, wait, what exact Oh, shit. Well, that's bad. Reading is good. So that means I have to freaking do this. I guess I could have evolved one, but I want to evolve. And then I can do this. And then we're going to do this. And we're going to evolve that. Uh, so Lucas came in and... Um, 
I think this wasn't this was not that long ago. This was a few years back, um, after episode six had come out, but before seven, I'm pretty sure. Uh, and they said that the only thing they're restructuring things now, and the only things that are canon are the films and the TV show, the t the the um, Attack of the Clones or whatever the you know the TV shows. And any future novels. So with one swipe of their hand, they eliminated, you know, like years and years and years of, um, work, basically building this entire unique, um, fandom, I guess. In, in a way, this entire universe. Um, so strictly speaking, this rambling discussion that I'm having, strictly speaking, the only thing that is canon anymore is what I just said. Um, and so, you know, when you go then to do a, a lore series discussing lore, uh, if I just go with that, and I just say, okay, only those things, what they said, are, are canon. Only those are the official lore. That's all I'm going to talk about. Um, I don't have a, a huge series. Because most of what I would talk about is contained within the films, which most people are very familiar with. So, I have to go. To the old canon. I have to go to the extended universe. Um, otherwise, it's just not a very interesting series. Because I think most people are... I think most people don't really care what Lucas says is, is strictly canon. Now, of course, that means that anything that I say can be nullified. Can be changed, can be altered, can be swept clean just off the board. Um, and yeah, that's just kind of one of those things that you have to, to deal with. Oh, by the way, in Shadowverse, this, this right here, this is Merlin. This is Merlin. Yeah, it's great. Like there, there's very few men, I guess. It's just, yeah, just make it like I showed Ziggy a picture of a card. It was Orcus. Like, in D&D, Orcus is, like, the god of undeath. He's, like, the what orc shamans worship and stuff. Like, he's just the god of undeath. Uh, and they turned her into, like, just some anime chick. And it was just like, yep, that's, that's Orcus. Okay, I guess. I'm building up to something, maybe. Maybe. Um... So, uh, the question that I have is, I can't, I don't want to announce in every video that, hey, you know, this is, uh, all right, just get him out there, I guess. If he doesn't have a way to deal with this, I win the game. That's how we'll do it. Um, May the light be your beacon. May all life prosper and be blessed. Glory. Well, that does kind of deal with it. Even with angelic snipe. Six. No, I would need one more freaking damage. Shit. Yeah, we need one more damage, and I can't do both. Shit. That heal saved his life. Uh, so I don't want to announce, uh, you know, in every video that, hey, we're dealing with the extended universe, which is not strictly canon. It might be, you know, change or blah, blah, blah. 
Um, because I just don't like that for the the whole format. Yep, she lost. Nice. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Get rid of that. <laughs> this is just BMing at this point. I'm BMing the AI and you can't stop me. Uh, <laughs> hold on. I'm just, I'm just screwing around. Okay, hold on. We're not, we're not done yet. Just give me, just give me a second. And I'll keep talking. Oh shit, it's my turn again? That's crazy. How does that work? I don't know, it's just, it's nuts. Well, here, I have some more magic missiles. On oh, here, let me, let me get some more cards. Cards are good. And then we can do this. And do this. <laughs> That's freaking funny. That is really freaking funny. Um, so in in Shadowverse, if you run out of cards and you have to draw a card, you lose the game, which I think is like Magic: The Gathering. If I'm not insane. Um, it's not like Hearthstone, where you take, you know, incremental damage. So, yeah. I BM'd myself into losing. That's... it's wonderful. Anyways, uh... I could do, like, a primer video where I say, you know, we're gonna do a Star Wars series. It's not canon. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Problem is, very few people overall will end up seeing that video. Um, because pretty much with every new video, I get new viewers that have not seen anything of the series so it is pointless in the end i think it will just be maybe i'll put it in the description of everyone um and i'm sure i'll get plenty of comments saying hey this isn't canon hey i don't care i'm making a series blah 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 um and we'll just deal with it and i think it'll be a fine series no matter what because I, like i said i don't think most people care uh, what is they they just want to know about Star Wars stuff. They want to know what what's really going on um, in when the, you know when they're playing Knights of the Old Republic or what what's going on uh, with the Sith. You know why why does Darth Maul look like that? You know they want to know. And I don't think the official canon provides too many answers. Whereas the extended universe, you have answer. He's he's part of the Zabrak, or is he a Sith? I don't even remember. Um, because there is a Sith race, if you're unfamiliar. Um. So, yeah. That's, that's the future of that. Uh, on this channel, this channel was, again, a little bit light. I think, a, you know, I managed to put something in. We, we ended Shantae, because I got frustrated with that. Um, and mm, yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty good. I wish I had a better hand to do it, but it's fine. I'll see to your raise and double down. Mmm, shit. Well, we'll just have to deal with that. Um, so, yeah, Shantae got scrapped. I still haven't done Zelda. I just do not have the motivation to do it. Uh, but we'll get back to it eventually, I'm sure. Um, well, he's got a good board, doesn't he? Uh, draw first. Eh, snowman. Um, I had two failed projects this week. Two of them. Two of them. That's just unacceptable. First one was a game that somebody mentioned in a comment in a Mythos video. Uh, it was called Super Mario Call of Cthulhu. 
something like that, Call of Cthulhu Super Mario, something like that, which is a hack, uh, a mod of Super Mario World that features Lovecraftian themes, um, and I thought that was pretty interesting, I was like, well, I'll check that out. Again, I didn't draw first, I don't know what I'm thinking, I'm just talking, I'm talking, I'm talking, I'm talking. Um... And, uh, so that was that. And then, well, so I tried it out and I actually started recording a video of it and I was playing it and I was talking about it. Uh, and then I played it for like 15 minutes or so and I realized this is way too frustrating because I couldn't get past like the first fourth of like the first level or something. Like it was just... I don't know, there was just so many platforms that I just, oh my goodness, and I was like, you know, I want to, I want to watch somebody play this and talk about it, but I don't want to play it myself. <laughs> I just, I don't know. You know, something like this, it's, it can be frustrating at times, but not that bad. Okay, that's good. That's good. Then we can draw. Mm, I probably could have done that in a better order. Anyways! So, yeah, that got scrapped. Um, oh, well. The other thing, uh, I actually did record the whole thing, hour and 15 minutes. It was a primer video for my upcoming Warhammer campaign starting on Thursday. And uh, I recorded an hour and 15 minutes, talked a whole bunch of... It was just like just like the old days of talking about RPGs forever. It was great. Um... I guess that's worth it. I guess I should do this. Okay. Uh, and then I went to go render it and put it together, and I found out that 20 minutes in, uh, my audio crapped out, and uh, I lost the whole thing. So here, again, this is how it works. I guess it's some bug with Windows 10. As far as I can tell, that's how it works. I don't think it's a problem with my hardware or anything like that. And... Wow. 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 What is this buffed up to? Oh, perfect. <laughs> Eat shit. Yeah, it's a conundrum, asshole. Uh, I guess it's a bug with Windows 10 that after a certain amount of time, like literally it is an amount of time, uh, the audio that goes into my microphone will become completely garbled and just unlistenable to. Just terrible. Um, I'm not sure why. I don't know why it works. I, I don't know how it does that for Windows 10. It just is what it is. Damn, I need one more. But I don't want to... I don't want to do this. I could just... It's so close to being awesome. One damage off. Alright, I guess we'll save it. Oh, wow! That was a misclick. 
All right, I, I don't think it matters, but holy shit, was that a misclick. All right, let's let's not BM anymore. <laughs> well, I won't make that mistake again. Um, and so the only way that I can fix that audio issue is before I record anything, I have to unplug the preamp from the computer, the USB port, uh, and then plug it back in. And that fixes it again until a certain amount of time later. Um, and by a certain amount of time, I'm saying like, I would say three or four hours, I think. If that amount of time goes by, it happens. Um, and so, what? Ha I mean, I know this, but I was stupid when I recorded the Warhammer video because I was like, because I tested the audio right before I started recording. I was like, oh, it sounds fine. It'll be fine. Uh, now when you're recording an hour and 15 minute video, and I didn't even make it, like I said, 25 minutes in before it messed up. So... Yeah, that was pretty stupid, because it's not... I mean, I like talking about RPGs, I like talking about Warhammer, I enjoyed doing the video, but doing the same video, hour and 15 minutes, twice... That has its downsides. So, it'll happen, but it might be like... Tuesday or Wednesday or something which is really pointless then because it does not give them much time to watch an hour and 15 minute video so it's questionable if I even want to do it again rather than just like summing things up for them I don't know I don't know <clears throat> it is a big bummer I'll admit um, but we did do D&D &D on Thursday, and I did do a video on Shadowverse. And maybe I'll do more videos on Shadowverse, just because it's what I'm playing, and it's easy. Um... If you're curious about how this deck works, since we're sitting here, um, every time I cast a spell, this creature gets one less in cost. And I have a couple of them in the deck, uh, maybe three. And this spell gets one less every time I cast a spell. So the goal is to throw out you know, two or three of these for real cheap. Uh, and then play this to give me an extra turn the next turn so that they can attack right away before she can do anything and it's basically a one turn kill. That's that's the idea. Um, <clears throat> okay. So Monday we still didn't do a game night I'm pretty sure because uh, we were down a member. So... You know, that, it's been a while. It's been a while for board games. And hopefully we're going to do it tomorrow. And we're going to do some Eon's End. That interesting little... Uh, deck building Sentinels type game. Um, hmm, that is a pain, isn't it? Uh, I was planning... I wonder if... Okay, fire chains would kill him. Okay. We're not going to do that, though. Because I would need 7 damage to make that work. So I guess we'll do this. And then we'll do this. Yes. Yes. Why do I always forget he has a real shitty... That's only 1 and 1, not 2 and 2. Oh, I always forget about that, and I can't even finish them up. This is the same problem as that other game. Fudge. Um, I was going to see Princess Mononoke in theaters. It was in theaters for like two days only. Uh, and I had tickets, but I couldn't drum up enough interest. And so we decided to just can it in favor of just playing Eon's End. Uh, now fire chains could be good. Two, four, five, and six. That is perfect. Cool. 
cool beans. Hmm, okay. Um, D and D. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about D and D. So Ziggy had said, right, uh, a little while back, we talked about this, that he was planning to finish up his campaign. All right. Um, okay, hold on. If I do... Yeah, I gotta do this. And then we snipe this. And then this can kill this. Control. We'll hold off. Well, we got the Mithril Golem. Sure. It's a bit weak, but okay. Anyway, so D&D, &D, you know, he had said planning the end of uh, January, early February to end the campaign. And he wanted it to have, like, a proper, uh, a proper ending, so to speak. Right? And that's all well and good. <clears throat> Last third, you know, on Thursday. <laughs> hmm. Even with dimension shift and evolving, yeah, I'm one damage off again. Well, then we wait. Why did I think that was a good idea? I don't know. Um, great. Um... On Thursday, before the session, he messages me and he says... I think it's only going to be one or two more sessions. Um, and of course, whenever anybody says one or two more sessions, it's always one session. Because when they say that, um, it pretty much means that they are... They're, they're ready. They're, they're pretty much done DMing. They're only doing this as like a... To be considerate to like, okay, well... Uh, I guess we'll we'll just go a little bit further so I don't bum people out. That's pretty much what it comes down to. Alright, I'm gonna dimension shift. Just give me a chance. Um, I don't quite have lethal. I could kaleidoscope Sammy. That would give me a lot of cards. Okay. Okay, that's six. Am I still one off? Wait, this works on it. Oh, okay, then we're fine. Good. I can kill you with magic missiles. Why am I fighting her again? Didn't I win? I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just talking. Um, so I was like, okay, fine. Last session, you know, I knew it was going to come to an end anyways. So um, it's unfortunate that uh, we didn't, we're not going to get to any sort of official conclusion whatsoever. Uh, <laughs> we rarely do. And... Um, he had said that, like, the two-week had, the two-week break had just kind of wrecked him because he had nothing planned. He had kind of just grown complacent, I guess, with just not doing anything. I don't know. I don't know. Um, 
whatever. It's, it's his decision. We're coming to an end. And so he's like, I'm going to bring out the bag. We're going to go out with a bang. And I'm like, all right, fine. So we go into the session. And obviously the others do not know this. They're not made aware of this. Um, which is, I guess, uh, how it should be. Um, and so the other two are kind of off uh, hunting down this orc. This orc shaman, and so they base they just go ahead and do that, and it's like this little battle that happens in a cave, and it's fine. Um, and meanwhile, I have this whole meeting that's uh, that's happening in in one of these houses, and so of course I'm not going to go to the meeting in person because then people can just kind of. Uh, put their grievance air their grievances publicly yeah I guess we'll keep control up so I was like okay I'm just gonna go into the meeting um, as a bat and I'll just kind of sit up there on a perch and I'll hang out and uh, listen in and so half the session was just kind of the, the, the whole battle in the cave with the orc and I was not involved in this so I was just kind of sitting there um, finally the meeting happens and I'm listening in and it kind of is going as I expected it would. Nothing too shocking happens, except uh, some members of House Derek, which were kind of the secretive. <sighs> uh, with the secretive house, some followers of House Derek had shown up to kind of... Uh, make sure that they were part of the meeting um and they were eventually allowed to stay after a bunch of bitching okay, that would bring it down to two but that wouldn't actually help me too much i don't want to have that so i guess we're gonna do this I guess we'll put them out there. Um, so yeah, meeting's going pretty much as, as planned. Um, until a member of House Derek uh, runs into the middle of the meeting and says, you know, we'll show you the power of House Derek or something like that. And he pulls out the bag, which is a little... It's a little unfortunate, I suppose, because, you know, if it w this wasn't the last session, you know, it basically, mm, yeah, I guess it basically nullified the whole thing that I had done. You know, it was like, okay, you did all that scheming, you did all this, 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 plotting and, and backstabbing and what for um and none of that really matters because bag um it just kind of happened to coincide with that that huge kind of scheme that i had going as and and the final session with the bag um So yeah, so he runs and he starts pulling from the bag, and um, nothing really happens. And then Lord Vineloff takes the bag, uh, and he ends up pulling out like massive amounts of gems out of the bag. And so Frederick's like, "Holy shit, I gotta get this bag." Um, wow, that actually got left alive, huh? Well, let's see what we can do then.
Do I? Summon 10 clay golems. Well, that's just nuts. Um, I guess we'll sit on it. Uh, so Frederick, uh, you know, I tried to fly what I wanted to do. Well, that was a lot easier than the other chick, that's for sure. Uh, what I wanted to do is, like, fly towards the bag as a bat, turn into a man at the last second, grab the bag, uh, and turn back into a bat and fly out. Uh, unfortunately, uh, like I always say, Dungeons & Dragons is a dice rolling game. Uh, and so I critically failed on that attempt. Uh, and so basically I flew into the bag as a bat. And that resulted in five pulls from the bag. Which is most of the time a guaranteed suicide. Um, not so this time. Frederick Zeller was very lucky. In fact, he got a quite good outcome, all things considered. Um... His next skill roll was an automatic crit. Uh, the next thing that he hit uh, died instantly. Um, uh, what else? He didn't age during the daytime anymore, and his overall aging was slowed by two-thirds, which pretty much makes him an immortal. Um... And the nearest doorway aged anybody that walked through it by 5d10 years, which didn't affect him, so that was good. Um, this is a waste of two spells now. That's pretty bad. I should be building a hand. Um, Okay, give me something that spell boosts. Jesus. <laughs> um, so everyone that walked through that doorway aged instantly, whereas he was unaffected, which is pretty good. Okay, we can... I'm going to do this. Yeah, I see what I did. Um, and there was a fifth effect, but I don't remember. Oh, the fifth effect was the bad one. Uh, he doesn't remember anything of the last 24 hours, which is a bummer, but not not that bad. I mean, he'll, he'll definitely get out of this. Um, Man, I'm getting some shitty draws. Ugh, that's a huge waste. Okay, so... Um, he, he, he pops out of the bag as Frederick Zoller, who doesn't remember where he is or what's going on. Um... Hmm... It's an interesting... Okay. Um... <sighs> Wait. Magic missile first. Yes, that's good. Uh, and everyone's just like, Frederick Zoller, what are you, how did you get here? You were trapped in his bag, and blah, blah, blah. Um, he doesn't know what's going on, but he doesn't like it, so he's gonna take this bag, uh, and run. Um, and so I use my crit on grabbing the bag. Which I think still resulted in... Me having a pull. Um, because I was like, you know, I want to grab the bag and then turn into bat form and fly away. And uh, there was a pull on that, and that was a really bad pull because that made me blind. That's it. Reader goes blind. 
and that sucks. So now I'm a bat flying around, and so I assume that like my bat form is broken or something like that. So I go back into a man, but I'm still blind, and now I got all these people like attacking me and stuff. And so there's just bag pulls out the ass, and basically the entire tree comes crumbling down. We all get turned into goblins. Uh, Ganon appears. Just just all sorts of shit happens. It's just not good. Um, and I get turned into, so I'm a blind goblin, but then I also get fused with like an earth elemental. So I'm like a rock, I'm a rock goblin, a blind rock goblin. That's, that's what I am. Yeah, that's a good sound. Um... Ooh, that's a very good card. Yeah, that's unfortunate. I don't have a damn thing that can stop that. And I have a shit hand. Yeah, you remember uh, you remember in, in Hearthstone they have that like dread steed that's a 1-1 one, one that keeps reappearing as a 1-1. One, one. Yeah, take that and make it a 5-5 five, five that keeps reappearing as a 5-5. Five, five. It's just menacing. I think I just have to out-aggro him somehow. Um, so I'm a blind rock goblin. Um, and eventually like I lose all the fingers on my one hand and they go over to my other hand. So I have 10 fingers on one hand, none on the other and so I'm just, I, I'm not a, I'm just a creature at this point. I'm not a person anymore. Jesus Christ, the combo wombos. Yeah, so now he has double five fives that I can never get rid of. And so they will just constantly be a five. This is a game over. This is a game over. Holy shit, the combo wombos. Um, yeah, I think I think we'll just, just get out of that. Um, it turns out that there was a sleeping kraken uh, in the middle of the lake that was kept in, like, check by all the, the light of these houses under the water. Um, that got turned into a goblin, I guess, so that's good. Um uh, so we a bunch of goblins are like crawling on shore, uh, and then the leader of House Derek comes out, and he's like, "I need the bag," and, and he's like a little rat man or something that can turn his bones to jelly. He's just all disfigured and messed up, um, so that's nice. And so uh, Tristran ends up pulling from the bag, and all of his stats get raised to twenty-two. So he's basically a demigod at this point. So this is what happened to Frederick Zoller. This is what happened to Tristran. Uh, basically opposite ends of the spectrum. Um, uh, the skeleton pulls from the bag, and he gets the ability to reverse gravity once per day uh, on himself. So he steals the bag, and he runs off to the stairs, like, you know, the big stairs of the whole Nine Kingdoms. Uh, and then he... Um, I we, we eventually make our way out to him, and I try killing him as quickly as I can, and I don't do it in one turn. So he teleports away, goes invisible, and then he reverses gravity on himself, so he falls up to, like, the third kingdom, just like the big ceiling of the stairs. Uh, and he dies, of course, but he can regenerate on his own. Um, and so he will just stay on the ceiling for the rest of eternity, holding the bag and safekeeping it. Uh, and that's how we ended it. So not a happy ending for Frederick Zoller. Uh, probably a pretty happy ending for Tristran. Uh, and just whatever for the skeleton. Um, yeah, so that was it. it was, there was a lot, a lot, a lot of laughs going on. It was a very entertaining session because it was somewhat one-shot-ish. Um, 
I don't know if it was a fitting end for the campaign. I, I couldn't say that because we didn't really do anything. It was just a free form kind of sandbox thing. Um, you know, if you want to tell a great story, I don't think that that campaign, how we did it, was a great way to do it. Um, I think it had potential for a great story, but we were just kind of fucking around the entire time. Um, that was probably mostly my fault. Um, Frederick Zoller is just a fuck around character. He always will be. Uh, if I ever want to actually do a story, I, I have to be Artemis. There's just, I, none of my other characters are good for it. It's just how it is. Um, but it was a very, very entertaining 10 sessions. We had a great time. Um, yeah, I think, I think we all enjoyed it immensely. So, uh, we're moving on to Warhammer then on Thursday. Uh, we're doing Care Gen, which may bleed into the start of the first session. We're going to find out. Uh, and it turns out we're going to have Mert joining us for this campaign. Uh, he is now free on Thursday nights, and so he is going to try joining us, which is very good because um, they only have three people, and Warhammer, the campaign, is going to be tough with three people. The, the campaign itself says if you have two or three people players, uh, PCs, it recommends having them each play two PCs. Um, I don't want to do that, so I was going to do a DM PC, myself playing one, but I'm very glad and I don't have to do that because Mert's involved. Um, so Warhammer, you know, the more I read about it, the more I look into it. We're doing the Warhammer End Times LP now. You know, Warhammer, very cool setting. I'm definitely looking forward to it. Um, I, a lot hinges on the players and how they act. Um, more so, I think, than D&D. Because in D&D, you can pretty much fuck around like we did. Uh, and have a good time, and, and probably stay alive, and just go with things. Warhammer, you know, if you start attacking random people, or if you start doing combats unintelligently, you know, you're just gonna die, and, and, and that's not really good for anybody. So, it's, they really have to get off this mindset that we just ended a campaign on, uh, and move into a new mindset, and I can't really guide them that much as the DM. Um, you know, Mert... He's a moron, yes, but generally he's fairly level-headed in how he plays an RPG. Um, he's not really the type like like Phil to just go off and do stupid shit. Uh, he'll say stupid shit all the time, but he doesn't really. He tends to just kind of stick to the plan. Um, so I'm hoping that'll help. And Ziggy is usually pretty good, although he can go off the rails pretty hard. Um, so I don't know how that'll go. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll see. I imagine Phil will die probably 30 times throughout the campaign. So that'll be good. Um, yeah, I guess, I guess that's about it. We'll see how it goes. Uh, as for anything else... Um, I've just been playing, yeah, I've just been playing a lot of Shadowverse and WoW. Because uh, I've been playing WoW almost almost every day with, uh, with Faradana. We have like over 40 hours, I would say, played. I think we're level, we're level 50 right now. Um, and it's, it's been really good. It's been just, uh, it was a great choice. You know, something that is easy. Uh, something that I can kind of carry her, in a sense. You know, like, I, I can do most of the grunt work. Um, and so she can kind of just enjoy herself. Uh, and we get to talk a lot. And, yeah, it's, it's it was a good choice. You know, my brother's just like, why wouldn't you play Guild Wars 2? It's so much better. And it's like, maybe, but there's nothing really quite as casual as WoW. And that's, that's what I want. I don't want something where it's just like, yeah, we're so intense and we're world versus worlding and shit. And it's just like... No, I just kind of want to take it easy and have something to talk about and just chat. So yeah, it's been it's going pretty well. But uh, all right, I guess that will bring us to a close. Check out the Feanor video tomorrow. I'm uh, I've got high hopes for that one. Uh, Warhammer on Thursday. Um, probably some more Shadowverse stuff. Maybe another starting a new LP. I already have another video of Warhammer End Times. Um, and I think we're going to be recording a bunch more of that, so that should be good. But my name is Meng. Um, this has been Hanging with Meng, and I'll see you fine folks next week.